right? Congratulations, you made it. This is part three of the history of the Daisy number 25. Now, this is called a tale of two daisies. We have four daisies on the table right now. We seem to be just multiplying like rabbits. However, one of these is not a number 25. <laughs> it might be obvious, huh? I'm not going to go into it, but it's called the Buck Jones. And it looks like the number 25, but it isn't. It's actually works a bit differently. Uh, it's a gravity fed, not a force fed, spring fed. <clears throat> but like I said, we're gonna go into that later. We have survived the prehistory <laughs> of the number 25. We started out in 1882 with the Plymouth Windmill Company. And then 1888, Plymouth Windmill starts selling and focusing on uh, BB guns, but not their own. They actually were selling uh, the Markham BB guns at first. Not until uh, about 1989, 1901, he finally came out with his own. So, but let's not, uh, let's not backtrack too far because we are now at the 1937 mark. And the 1937 is what this new Chinese made uh, gun is all about. That's what they sort, sort of modeled it about. So, because this is the, uh, this is the real 1937 made in Plymouth, Michigan. This is a variant, uh, variation six. Uh, this particular one is probably 1938. Cut some the uh, grooves in the butt stock. It's also, you can see the hand grips are a little bit different. They kind of put the 1914 hand grips on this, didn't they? All right. So what was happening in 1936? Well, the number 25 variation six. Scroll work, the scrolling, right? Here's the, here's the pre-1936. Uh, this is 1917. And it, as you can see, there's no scrolling on our scroll work, right? But here, oh yes, we can see it, or hopefully you can see it. Now they didn't extend the scroll work all the way down and the scroll work isn't as intricate. And of course, this is a painted black barrel. I don't know if you can see that. This is sort of a blued, traditional blued barrel of sorts. Oh, but there were other things going on in 1936. But this was significant because, uh, well, a lot of things were happening. For instance, night vision was invented. Imagine what that allowed the military to do. The first television show was being broadcast by RCA. This is huge. And that's why I kind of bring this into the picture. Because they uh, started using the uh, cult of personality in order to uh, advertise their products. Now, 
something I wanted to mention before I go on further about what was going on in 1936 was uh, Lefevre. Yes, Lefevre, 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 Lefevre. Charles Lefevre. He's the one uh, back in 1913 or so, maybe prior to that, of course, that uh, came up with the design. And Lefevre was part of a prestigious family of uh, shotgun innovators. Now, uh, their product, their shotgun innovations, uh, were, were world-renowned. However, uh, the Lefevre business uh, wasn't, <laughs> wasn't as successful as their, uh, as their celebrity, let's say. And so um, Lefevre went into a lot of different business ventures and lost. Uh, including ventures with his own sons. And it turns out that uh, Charles Lefevre seems to not have wanted to get involved <laughs> with the family shotgun business. And he uh, invented the, uh, this particular number 25 and uh, sold it to Daisy and then joined Daisy for quite some time. Um, in the in their business so all right let me go back into uh, what was going on in 1936 uh, something we didn't mention was Hitler of course we, we never really want to mention Hitler do we <laughs> but uh, 1936 was the year before relations with Hitler had, uh, let's say, officially soured. You know, we were, we were certainly on the fence by, uh, about getting into World War II. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, well... Let's, let's just put, uh, leave it at that. Uh, a year after 1936, uh, things were getting pretty bad uh, regarding U.S. relations and Germany and Hitler and all that. So uh, I, I kind of find that interesting in relation to the 1936. Uh, all right, now there are some things I wanted to also cover Quackenbush, he worked for Remington. Now, I had, there's a question in the last video if I had gotten that right, if this was modeled after the Winchester or the Remington. It was the Winchester. Um, what got me confused was uh, Quackenbush worked for Remington and then made B BB guns, broke from Remington and made BB guns in 1872. Yeah, so uh, there was the confusion there. But no, this was modeled after the uh, Winchester Model 12. Uh, and the Winchester Model 12, the shotgun, was, of course, invented by John Browning. So uh, the Model 12 Winchester pump shotgun, that was 1912. What's significant about that? And this gun, well, in World War I, th this was what the Nazis feared. Well, not the Nazis, but the Germans. <laughs> they weren't Nazis but in World War I, right? Uh, this is what the Germans feared, was the trench gun, the Model 12, the 1912 trench gun. And the Model 12 served in World War I, in World War II, in Korea, and Vietnam. And it's also used extensively by law enforcement. Right? So the model shotgun that came before this was the 1897, which is somewhat similar. <clears throat> 
Okay, I want to mention now there are some key figures in the number 25 and in Daisy history as well. And that's Charles Lefevre. He was the inventor of the number 25, right? And then we have Louis Cass Hoff, or Ho. And, uh, well, he was president uh, of the uh, Daisy Company and also uh, a financer, right? And then we have Clarence Hamilton. Clarence, that's a Daisy. Clarence Hamilton was the founder of Daisy, and he originally was a watchmaker and an inventor. And, uh, yeah, he, he was the founder. And then we have Lewis. No, not Lewis, because we already talked about him. Um, William F. Markham. Yes, William F. Markham, because when Daisy started, they were actually um, using, they were, they were using Markhams, right? They were selling Markhams. And uh, eventually, by uh, 1901, Daisy had come up with their own, and thus the, the competition began. Actually, I think the competition was, uh, was pretty stiff from the get-go uh, in the relationship with Markham and, uh, and Daisy. However, Markham did really well, right? So he didn't get stiff, that's for sure. <clears throat> now, these three characters are the key, uh, key characters, key figures in the Daisy number 25. Or at least this Daisy number 25. <laughs> okay. And uh, it, it, as a little side note, it took a year. Charles Lefevre was such a, uh, a stickler on design. It took them a year just to make the tooling to create this gun. So I thought that was a, a pretty interesting little factoid. All right. Now, I wanted to, since this is this is my gun right here, is the uh, is probably somewhere between 1938, 1942. I'm not quite sure um, how I can pinpoint it any closer to that. I'll show you. Maybe you can see the the serial numbers and whatnot, and really close some of the etching. So this 1938, they started to work on the Red Rider. This is not the Red Rider. This is the number tw uh, number 25. But in 1938, they started to work on the Red Rider, which uh, came out as the Model 4 number 111 in 1940, and uh, eventually the Model number 94 in 1951. Well, this is more of a company factoid than it is a model number 25 factoid. But Red Rider licensing, licensing agreement, their formal licensing agreement, which is actually signed in October 6th of 1939, well, it's believed to be the oldest continually in force license agreement in US history. That's incredible. So the uh, the sister gun, if you want to call it that, uh, of the number 25, which is the Red Rider, shares some uh, amazing uh, prominence in the business world. You know, some of the other things interesting about uh, Daisy in the business world is, like I said, they, they, were, they started using the cult of personality in this particular case. They were uh, uh, getting rid of some of the old number five <laughs> parts, for the Markham number five, and, uh, and pumped out the uh, Buck Jones and uh, made a little competition, right, between the uh, Buzz Barton. <laughs> 
Um, but these were television personalities, right? Uh, TV, the new TV thing that just came out. These were uh, television personalities, and they were amongst, of course, the first to uh, use television advertising and, and uh, television personalities to sell their product. Um, they were also the first to, they, they were selling uh, various manufacturers before then they started manufacturing their own, kind of like Costco now and the Kirkland brand. They were sort of, I think, maybe the first to do that sort of thing. Obviously, the first to uh, um, get involved in these licensing agreements, whatever that means. So this is the tale of two daisies. This is no longer the prehistory. This is the history now. We are now in 1936, 1937, 1938, right? With this, we're somewhere between 1938 and 1942. So if you have any significant tidbits of history that, uh, that you think belong uh, in this sort of picture, in this story, uh, definitely leave them in the comments. Uh, let us know. Um, we're going to go deeper into the history of the number 25 um, and, and the variants and, of course, do the, the uh, comparisons. But we really want to get to shooting these, so um, I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, in the next few videos, we're going to just start having fun shooting them, make some comparisons uh, while we're shooting. All right. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Hey, be sure to give a subscribe, yeah? Uh, leave some comments, and come visit us at Airgun Investigation .blogspot com. The link is down there. All right, see you next time.